June is upon us, and it's Pride Month in the capital city of Columbus, Ohio. Hello, this is Curtis Davis, managing member of True FM Online and ICS. As I look back at when I first came to Columbus, Ohio in 1991, we've come a long way. Our city keeps growing by leaps and bounds, and we're one of the most diverse opportunity cities that ever existed in the world. We'd like to thank our Mayor Andrew Ginther and Councilman Zach Klein, President of Columbus City Council, and all the council members, along with our county commissioners, for making Pride Month the success that it normally is. And the success from the folks at Stonewall Columbus, from Carla Rotham, who is the executive director, to Brian Chin, who is the board president. We would like to thank them for 35 years of giving back to the community and showing Columbus's pride. We'd like you to take this time right now to listen to this interview with one of the guests will be special headlining at Pride Fest 2016 at 845 on the main stage at Goodale Park. This is Curtis Davis, and we're calling from the studios of True FM Online down at 175 on the park. And we have a special guest with us today, Trey Pearson, who is from Everyday Sunday. Welcome to True FM Online. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. This is being recorded on Memorial Day on the 30th of May. We're doing this a couple days ahead of time in an announcement that you're getting ready to make to Columbus, Ohio, and, and really to the world. Give us a little bit of a background on your your band, and I think you've grown up here in Columbus from what I could read. Kind of give me a little bit of background on you and your band. Sure, yeah. Yeah, I'm born and raised here in Columbus area. Grew up in a small town outside of the city called West Jeff. Lived in Hilliard for several years and then kind of bounced around between living in the city. You know, I was out in Dublin for a while, and <laughs> now I'm here in Grandview, uh, which which I absolutely love. So. As far as Everyday Sunday goes, I started it when I was 16 years old, signed a record deal, shortly out of high school. I actually signed with a huge Christian record label out of Nashville, Tennessee. So that's kind of been the majority of my career has been with that project that I started at 16. I've had different guys play with me over the years. I've been at, doing it full time for a lot of years. Just this last year, I put out a side project with a friend of mine called Populous. Then, you know, we've done some production for other artists under that name as well. Everyday Sunday has been a band I've been doing my whole career. Excellent, excellent. So mainly Christian pop, I believe, or what's the format? That, that you guys sure play. yeah pop rock progressive pop or pop alternative I don't know <laughs> it's progressed a lot over the years as far as stylistically you know I've, I've never enjoyed using the word Christian as an adjective we've definitely been categorizing that being on a record label that is faith based in that sense yeah so I mean we've definitely had a lot of success in that world we've had five number one U.S. singles 15 top tens We've had a lot of support in that in that world. Yeah, excellent. So then you're on the road. Um, do you travel to other cities around the world, or just here in, in the United States? Where's some of your venues been that you've actually performed at? Yeah, yeah, we tour all over the world. We've been in all 50 states and 20 countries. Definitely have been very very thankful to have a, a, a worldwide fan base. Yeah. Well, I could see that from your, you've got almost 28,000 Facebook followers. If I can only get my admin here in the station to get up to 28,000 followers for True FM, I'd be a happy camper. <laughs> so that would be a great thing. So obviously you do have a following, you know, I kind of looked at your Facebook page and saw some of the posts and different things like that. And obviously people are engaged and was able to listen to some of your music and stuff, you know, very up oh, thank you. type of music and everything. And I'm kind of a a mixed type of person. I grew up in a small little city 80 miles east of here. You know, we had to listen to country music a lot, so that was enough to, you know, to bore you to, to death. But, you know, singing and stuff, was that something that you, you, you knew as a kid that that's what you wanted to do in life? Or was it because, kind of like, kind of like my grandmother that made me sing, you know, in church, you know, every Sunday? Uh, or was it something that was just natural to you? I think it's something that sort of developed throughout my childhood. I uh, grew up teaching myself how to play piano on our family piano. It was my great grandma's, and it was my grandma's, and it was my mom's, and now it's mine. As a teenager, or really even a preteen, once I got into sixth grade, I started doing professional and semi professional theater downtown Columbus, uh, which at the time was mostly with Columbus Junior Theater, it's now called Columbus Children's Theater, and so I was in a lot of musicals, and I would get into musicals because I wanted to act, and I knew I could carry a tune, but I didn't think a whole lot of it. As I got into high school, 
I got invited to this youth group where there were kids that would they would write their own songs and play them for the youth group. And it was a pretty good size youth group. It was like hundreds of kids that would come every week to this thing. And I thought, man, that's really cool. And I thought, man, I should write my own song and see if I can play it for everyone. So I did, and I needed a band to play it. So I put a band together. And probably less than a year later, decided to call this band Everyday Sunday. And that's what I've been doing ever since. It was a unique journey, I think, to get to that point. But uh, maybe I think just between teaching myself how to play piano growing up, doing musicals and things like that, and having the influence of music within that youth group sort of all brought together this desire to create my own music and my own art through that way. So what's probably been the the one person that's been kind of uh, more of a a guiding light or a uh, an inspiration to you to do what you do each and every day? Is there a performer or a person or an individual? Hmm. I don't know. You know, I I think it's such a big melting pot of so many things. You know, like as a little kid, I loved listening. My parents had vinyls, like big album stuff that I would listen to. And I love listening to Michael Jackson records and Billy Joel records and Phil Collins and stuff like that. So that was definitely a huge influence on me as a kid. But then, you know, as a young teen, I got into everything from Green Day to Nirvana to Weezer, Jimmy Eat World, and a lot of power pop stuff like that. I really love third eye behind a lot. You know, all American rejects as I got older and I definitely look back and I can see so many different sorts of inspiration and how it's all sort of made me who I am and, and given me inspiration to want to do different things. And maybe that's why my music has continued to develop and progress so much over the years because I don't really think any album sounds much the same. I mean, these days if I think about my favorite bands and artists, it's artists like The Killers and Coldplay and bands like that that really move my soul a lot. But I still go back and listen to, you know, a lot of those 80s artists and 90s artists that had such huge influences in my life as well. So uh, I feel like, it's, yeah, it's a big melting pot of all of that. <laughs> so I, I guess the, the the good question is, is are you in the church choir? Because if you're a singer, then obviously they're always looking for voices or do you kind of <laughs> avoid the church thing? Kind of like, again, like how my grandmother used to make me sing, you know, in front of all the yeah. folks in church. And I never got, not never was a singer like you. <laughs> No, I never did like a church choir type thing. That was never really much of an influence in my life or like, I don't know, the churches I went to didn't really have stuff like that. The church I started going to as a teenager, it did have a band and I really liked bands at the time. I think that had a huge influence on me and wanting to start my own band. I was really always more interested in creating my own songs than playing other people's or anything like that. So. so you're kind of more of an individual, you write your stuff, you sing your stuff versus, you know, someone yeah. that writes for you and then you sing it or vice versa or something of that nature. Well, that, that makes good sense. So Yeah, I definitely would consider myself a writer. I've written on pretty much all the stuff we've ever put out. You know, I definitely have done a lot of co-writing with bandmates and just even, even other people that I've had relationships with uh, over the years. But yeah, definitely more of that mentality of wanting to put out my own art and my own emotions and my own thoughts in, in the music that I write. So obviously you've done well, you know, making music a career. A lot of times parents are negative and say, we just Trey, we just don't think you're going to make it or, you know, you need to get a regular job or something of that nature. And obviously with, you know, 25,000 plus followers on Facebook and stuff and, and number one hits and stuff on uh, iTunes and some of the other charts and stuff, obviously you're making a, a decent living, you know, traveling around and, and having some fun and stuff like that. Well, one of the things that you're going to be doing here in the month of June, and again, this is being recorded on Monday, this announcement will be made Wednesday morning of, uh, a special venue that you're going to to do here in the uh, city of Columbus. It's the 35th annual Pride celebration for the LGBTQ community here in Columbus. You have agreed to perform at that venue. I believe it's Saturday night at 8:05. Yeah. Okay, I couldn't remember. Uh, Friday evening. Oh, Friday evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Friday at eight, evening at 8.45 p.m. At 8.45. And if folks look at the website, uh, prior to this, it says special guest. There is nothing in there that says who you are, what sure. the band is or anything. And obviously, there's a gentleman on there, I believe from American Idol, that's before you or after you. I can't even remember. Uh, before me, yeah. Before you. So, 
So obviously no one is aware that you're even going to perform, but obviously we're going to be doing this announcement and, and that's one of the reasons that we're doing this interview with you today. I and mean, there's something else that you're going to do that evening to the city of Columbus. So do you want to kind of fill us in and what that announcement's going to be? Yeah, absolutely. This last year has been quite a crazy one for myself. I have slowly come to be able to just admit to myself and to my family that I'm gay. That has been a very difficult journey to get to this point. Also very freeing and exciting journey as much as it's been a difficult and hard journey. So I am going to be headlining Pride Fest here on June 1st. I am announcing to the world and my fans and my, you know, so many people in my life that I'm getting. And I think uh, in a city like Columbus, Ohio, which is the most diverse city in the probably in the world, it's probably a, a great place to start. I think there's a lot of folks in the central Ohio area that are very uh, affirming and confirming uh, a lot of yeah. uh, different organizations and stuff. What has been the reaction from some of your immediate family and the folks that you've told so far? Have they been receptive or accepted or negative? Yeah, yeah. It's been mixed. You know, uh, definitely most people have been super loving and affirming and proud of me, everything like that. And some people are having a harder time with it because it doesn't necessarily make sense with what they've been taught, just like it had never made sense in my own life with what I had been taught. You know, there's definitely a grieving process for some of the people that are close to me. And, uh, and then, you know, I've had a few horrible people in my life through this journey. For the most part, there's been a lot a lot of amazing people that have given me support and helped me as well. Well, I think living, you know, living in Columbus, you have a, a very affirming mayor, a very affirming city council, county commissioners, mm, folks that yeah. are truly dedicated. Uh, we've got an HRC dinner coming up here, I think next Saturday, which 700 plus people will show up again affirming. It'll be political officials and what have you and stuff. So I think you're always going to have those few people and and I know my own, you know, personal story of growing up in a small city. I was actually outed by a drag queen to my parents, which was even crazier. So at least you were able to have that conversation in a better light than a drag queen telling your father's euchre partner um, that your son's gay. Yeah. Um, and then when, when my family found out on my mother's side, one aunt at a, an event basically blew mashed potatoes out of her mouth. And the other aunt stood up and said, let's go shopping. So I don't know if that was a good thing, bad thing in between. So, but you have those scenarios that you're going to have the folks that are still in in remorse or thinking they maybe did something wrong. But but obviously, this is probably a good step in in the right direction and everything. So, so do you plan on staying then here in Columbus and you know staying in the the Central Ohio area and then just doing your traveling, or do you think that you might live somewhere else in the in the near future? I definitely see myself staying here in Columbus. I love this city. I've toured all over the world. I've been in every major city in the U.S. and uh, a lot of the big ones around the world. And I just, uh, as much as I love visiting those places, Columbus is definitely home. I always enjoy coming back here. Plus, I have two children, them and, and their mom, my uh, ex-wife. They all live here. It's very important for me to be close to family and to be with my family. And that makes sense, yeah. You've got to keep family in mind when you have these types of situations or scenarios and stuff. And, and that says something for you as a person that you're wanting to still engage and be a part of their life and their, their upbringing and, and what have you. We've been talking to Trey Pearson. He is from Everyday Sunday, and uh, the other name was Pearson? I'm sorry. I, I, I'm i bad at names. Populous, okay. I'm bad at names, and if I don't write them down, then I'm, I'm, I'm shooting in the dark. Who is just now officially, and will be pushing this out late Tuesday evening, Wednesday morning, that he is coming out to the city of Columbus, to the world. He's been known uh, across the world as one of the uh, probably outgoing Christian pop, Christian music push-outs. And that Artists, takes- sure artist that takes uh that takes a lot of courage and obviously to come to an event you know in your really in your hometown that there'll be over a half million people there uh obviously that's yeah. You know, it's not like you're going to a, a crowd of 50 or 20 people. There's going to be quite a few people there. Uh, we hope sure. hope that folks that are listening to this will will show up Friday evening, support Trey, show Trey yeah. that you know Columbus and Central Ohio and the the state of Ohio cares about him as an individual and and hopes that he will continue his success in the Christian music industry across the. Uh, 
next few years. Trey, uh, we wish you all the best of luck, and uh, we hope to see you, hey, thank you so much. at Pride. And we'll uh, have some of our True FM people come up to you, and then maybe we'll do an on-site interview uh, there at the Pride Festival. All right, sounds great. I'm very proud to be a part of it, and I can't wait. Thanks for your time. You've been listening to True FM Online from the studios at 175 on the park. True FM, giving back to the community that gives to us.